Hello, my fellow artists, and welcome to art class. My name is Mrs. Krista Freddy, and I will be your art teacher this year. The rules for the art room are simple. Be an artist. Every letter in the word artist stands for a rule in the art room. A stands for attitude. Be positive and try your best. R stands for respect. Respect everyone and everything. That includes the friends in your class, the teachers, and the art supplies. T stands for think. Understand and demonstrate that you know what we're learning about. Think outside the box. Use the box. I stands for imagine. Be creative. Be a dreamer. Remember, your art does not have to look like your neighbor's or mine. S stands for spick and span. Clean up after yourself and your table. Even if you did not make the mess, doesn't mean that you can't be a team player and clean up. So help your friends, help Mrs. Christopher Reddy, and help the custodians and clean up. And T stands for target. Stay on target, follow instructions, and try your best. Students who follow the rules and engage in the lesson will produce quality artwork. Every student has the right to a positive and learning environment. We're going to go over the art room technology agreement. This has brought up some issues in the past about friends looking up things that they should not be looking up in the art room or playing games that are not art related. So I want to go over what is expected in the art room. In order to protect all students and the classroom technology, students need to follow some important rules and procedures. The choice of a student to violate these requirements will result in a student not being allowed to use any technology for the rest of the school year. We're gonna go over all nine of them. I know there's a lot of information. However, it's very important to make sure you have your listening ears on and that you understand each and every one of these. The first one, students must wash their hands prior to using any classroom technology. If you have paint on your hands and then you use a Chromebook or a tablet, you could get paint all over it and then they're not being able to be used in the future. So make sure you're washing your hands. Also, technology does not go well with water and paint. So if you have a tablet, make sure you're not sitting at a table that there's a bucket of water at. Number two, no food or drink should be near the classroom technology at any time. This also means that you probably shouldn't have food and drink in the art room. So leave it in the cafeteria. Don't bring it into the art room. Number three, mobile technology devices, such as iPads, should remain on your desk or table at all times. Students should not carry these devices around without permission. If you drop one of these devices, they could break and then we won't have them for next time. Number four, all technology in our classroom should be treated with respect. Just like respect is one of our roles to be an artist, students should use them gently for educational purposes only. So make sure you're respecting the tablet or Chromebook or any technology that we are using. And you also need to be respectful of what websites and apps that you are using. Number five. Number five says students must not change the setting on any of the devices unless specifically asked by the teacher. So some of the examples were students were using um, the tablets and then changing the settings to dim it and we could no longer see the images or students were going in and doing a split keyboard. So please do not mess with any of the settings or change any of the settings without talking to me first. Number six, students must respect the files of others by refraining from using, altering, reading, deleting other students' files. So if a file is left open on a device, just let me know, or if the students in the classroom, let them know so it can be saved or closed. So for instance, this could happen when we um, are uploading art to Artsonia. Just let me know if someone didn't finish um, logging out of their account or if we're making a stop motion video, make sure you don't delete someone's project. Number seven, students must 
only use apps or websites in which the teacher has instructed them to use. Students are not checking personal email, so you're allowed to check your Penn Trafford email, but you should not be using any email outside of the school or browse the internet freely for personal entertainment purposes. So this means you're allowed to get on Artsonia, you're allowed to get on my website to look up some art games. If you are drawing a baby sloth and you wanna look up what a baby sloth looks like, you can totally go into Google, search images and search baby sloth. If you wanna look up what your dog looks like and um, draw a German Shepherd, for instance, you can do that. However, you are not looking up inappropriate things in school. It has to be related to your art project. So the technology should be used for school topics only. If you're unsure, you can ask me. Number eight, the use of the camera or video on any device must only be utilized for educational purposes, such as recording learning of uh, results. So that means uploading your things to Artsonia. You can do a video, you can upload a picture, but we are not taking pictures of our friends or taking pictures of other people in class or recording the teacher. You need to make sure you're using the technology appropriately. And last but not least, number nine, all technology should be properly turned off and put away safely prior to class dismissal. This is one of my biggest pet peeves in the art room. We are all about creative problem solving. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Mistakes are okay. As Bob Ross says, As you paint, you'll see all kinds of things happening on your canvas and very soon you learn to use all these beautiful little things that happen. I think in one of the earlier shows I mentioned, we don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. So what happens if you make a mark on your paper or you do something on your paper that you don't like, that you consider a mistake? You can erase it. That's why we draw light until you have it right. If you draw lightly, it makes it much easier to erase. You can flip your paper over. There's a whole other side to your paper. Maybe you want to cut that part off or color or paint over top of it. You can turn it into something else or you can even glue something on top of it. If you make a mistake, it's okay. You only get one piece of paper. You'll be surprised what you can do with a mistake. Sometimes it turns into a happy accident. The first thing you should do is Put your name on the paper. No name, no fame. Always put your full name, which is your first and your last name, and class code on your paper. Every nine weeks, we're going to do at least three projects. I will tell you, due dates and lessons subject to change due to assemblies and weather and tons of things that could come up. So please make sure you're checking your Google Classroom for updates and checking your email. You need to dress for art. You may wanna bring a paint shirt or a smock from home. I will have smocks or aprons in the classroom that you are allowed to use at any time, as long as I'm not giving instruction. You can wait until after the instruction and then go get your paint smock. Remember to dress appropriately on art class days. Art class day is not the time to wear new clothes or to dress up. We will use materials that can stain and we will get messy. If your art class falls on a day where there's awards being given or it's a picture day or a different day that you are expected to dress up for school, please bring an extra shirt or your paint smock if you need to um, change because we will be still having art class. I will be happy to allow you to go visit the restroom or the nurse's office to change um, any materials that you need. It is the student's responsibility to dress appropriately. And it is the student's responsibility to put their paint shirt on if they have one 
or to use the aprons provided and to use all materials carefully as demonstrated. Dress for art class. In order to turn in your art, there are a few different ways to do it. So if we were in class, I might ask you to turn it in. Maybe I wanna hang it in the showcase or in the hallway. Or I could ask you to upload it to Artsonia. If you do not have an Artsonia account, you may turn it in through Google Forms. You do not have to turn it in both on Artsonia and Google Forms. Pick one or the other. Here are the access codes for Artsonia. Remember, your iPad, cell phone, or Chromebook always needs to be parallel or facing the same direction as your art. Artsonia can be downloaded on any device. The artistic process is laid out below. This process will be followed if you are in class or if you are learning online. So the artistic process starts with the first step. You pick your art through the options that Mrs. Cristoforetti gave you in the Google Classroom or through the art that she is asking you to make. So you're gonna learn about the elements and principles of art, maybe an artist. The second step is creating your artwork. The third step is documentation. Document and turn in your artwork. You need to share your work with Mrs. Cristoforetti through Artsonia, or Google Forms. The fourth step is to check PowerSchool for your grades. If you turned it in on Artsonia, you can even read feedback. This is what the art schedule looks like, what your day in art will look like when you come to the art room. First, I'm going to greet you at the door. I'm going to tell you either seat, which means go in and find your seat, or folders, find your table folder. Then find your seat. Step two, I will give you instructions and expectations for the day. I might even give you a demonstration on what we are doing. The next step is your creative time. This is the creative problem solving, coming up with your own solution or idea for your art, and then start working on your masterpiece. The last five minutes of class, I'll have a buzzer that goes off. When that buzzer goes off, you know the buzzer means it's cleanup time. So clean up, even if it's not your mess, let's be a team player. When your table's all cleaned up, your table folders are put away, your floor under your table is clean, then find your seat. After everyone is sitting quietly, we will play the smartest artist game. We'll know everyone's ready because Mrs. Christopheretti will say, it's time for, and the class will repeat, the smartest artist. Each table will get to answer a question. If they answer the question correctly as a table, they will be able to line up. My friends in line need to be quiet so the other friends at the tables can hear the questions. If a table answers a question wrong, the line may be asked to answer the question correctly. Once everyone's chairs are pushed in and we're in line quietly, we can answer any questions for the day and we can say our goodbyes. If there's time, we might even play a game. Google Classroom etiquette. So these are the things that you should be doing when you're on Google Classroom. Stay organized, whether you're coming into class or you're working from home. You need to stay organized organize, know exactly when things are due, use that calendar, use the to-do list, be smart online. Remember, do not put any personal or private information out there. You need to chat responsibly. If you have a question for me, send me an email, send it on Google Hangouts. Please do not put it in the thread for the entire class. That is for questions that benefit the entire class. For instance, hey, why is this link not working? Okay. Have a schedule, have a routine if you're using Google Classroom and working from home. 
you need to make sure you're taking breaks, brain breaks, body breaks, take a snack break, work a little bit every day. You need to also make sure you're checking your messages. In the morning, you should be checking your email. The days that you're scheduled for art, you need to log into the Google Classroom and check the stream. And every day, I'm gonna remind you to check your email. If you run into a problem or if you have questions or you're confused, ask for help. Google Meet etiquette. So Google Meet is if we are chatting online. So say you have a question and we're video chatting. If we have scheduled an appointment to meet, Make sure you're giving yourself enough time to wake up and get ready. Make sure your computer's charged and be prepared for the meeting. If it's a group meeting, meaning there's more than just two people on it, mute your microphone. It helps cut down the extra noise so everyone can understand and hear what's going on. If you're muted and you have something to say, make sure you're chatting responsibly. So if you have a question, just put a question mark. It's just like raising your hand in class. If you have something to share, use the exclamation point, just like raising your hand in class. I will call on you. If we are video chatting, I do not want to see your ceiling. Make sure your camera is pointed at that face of yours. Make sure I can see you, make sure we can hear you, and make sure you're in a space in your room or your home where there's not a lot of distraction. I would highly encourage you to use headphones. Headphones makes it much easier for you to hear and less disruptive for the people in your home. Make sure you're participating. Be focused, be attentive, be kind, and be an active participant. Okay, my artists. So we're gonna show you how to get into the Google Classroom um, from the home page. So when you go into Google, it'll look just like this. So you need to come up to the right hand side and click on the tiles. This group of boxes right here, these are called tiles. So you're going to click on the tiles and scroll down until you find the Google Classroom icon. It's a green square with a little person in it. This is classroom. Click on that. Now it'll say no classes. You might have enrolled in some of your other classes. Um, but you need to enroll into art class. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to the right hand side and click, click the plus button and it'll say join class or create class. Well, you need to join a class, so click join. Now this is very important. You need to make sure you're using your school Gmail account. If you're using your parents' email account or your personal email account, it's not going to work as well with the way that the Google Classroom is set up. So please make sure you're using your Penn Trafford Gmail school account. And if you're not, you can click switch account. And it's going to ask you for a class code. Well, on the slideshow I presented, I have all the class codes already listed. There is a class code for Trafford, class codes for Level Green, and class codes for Harrison Park. Now, for each one of those, there are individual grade class codes. So please, if you're in first grade at Harrison Park, make sure you're grabbing the first grade Harrison Park class code, not the first grade Level Green class code. So find your building, find your grade. You can copy that class code come back over and paste it right in the box where it's asking for the class code. And then on the right hand side, there's a blue button that says join. Click join. And there you go. You log right into the classroom. Now, a little tutorial on getting into your Google Classroom. If you have multiple classes, you can come up here and click classes, and you're gonna see a tile for each one of those classes. You click on them. This is the stream. So this is just important information your teacher wants you to find. Um, on the left here, there are upcoming assignments that will be posted. So if you're not sure something's due, you can check it out there. You can also um, click the to-do list all of your um, assignments will be there. You can also look at the calendar. All of your assignments for all your classes will be stored in your calendar. 
So when you are looking for your assignments, so this stream is just maybe important information, um, kind of a news feed. Hey, good luck on the test on Friday. Hey, don't forget we have a two hour delay today, something like that. The classwork is where your assignments are going to be. So you can track your progress where it says view your work. You can click on the assignments right here and you'll see I have my instructions. Your first thing is you're gonna go over the expectations, grading and contact information. So all you have to do is click on the slide and it will take you there. And then if you want to talk to someone else in the class, you can click people. Now, the big thing, I'm gonna come back to the stream. The big thing on this stream is when you add a comment, everyone can see it. So comments are only for questions or comments or suggestions that would be best for the entire class. It is not acceptable just to write, hi, or happy birthday, Johnny, okay? That is not what the news feed is for. That's not what the comment section is for. The comment section is for comments, concerns, suggestions that would be best for the whole class. Now, if you have a question that needs to be asked that is specifically for you, you can either email me or you can send me a Google Hangouts or you can um, send me a specific message um, in Google Classroom. If you have any questions, once again, email me. You can go into your Google Hangouts or you can send me a message in your Google Classroom.